questions you may have. So thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Marketing on a Shoestring Budget, Maximizing Impact with Minimal Spend, Spend with Scott Clannon of Clannon Marketing. Before I hand it over to Scott, just a few quick things. You are welcome to ask questions throughout the session. You can put those in the chat box at any time and we will address them once Scott is done with his presentation. And then you'll also receive a follow-up email um, and that will go out tomorrow. It will include a recording of today's session along with the link that Scott shares where you can download a copy of today's presentation. It will also have links to our upcoming sessions and links to our community partners who are co-hosting today's session with us. Scott and I are also currently working on scheduling out um, the second third of the year. So May through August workshops are coming soon. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, we are also almost done with our website. So exciting news for anyone who's joined us recently and knows that has been under construction for, for quite some time. So when that goes live, um, please be feel free to check out our events calendar there as well. So at this time, I'll hand it over to Scott and we can get started. Excellent. Thank you, Jordan. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our brand new topic, marketing on a shoestring budget. I'll be sharing my screen. So one moment while I pull up today's presentation. All right, Jordan, just confirm, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Excellent. Well, again, today is a brand new topic. This is one that Jordan and I uh, kind of brainstormed earlier this year, as we've seen uh, more of a need to discuss ideas around marketing tactics and strategies that are of a lower or no cost at all. So again, this is marketing on a shoestring budget in partnership with the Illinois SBDC at Champaign County EDC. Of course, we want to thank them for making uh, this webinar today possible, along with our other uh, great community partners. As Jordan mentioned, if you would like a PDF of today's presentation, you can visit our website at clannonmarketing.com forward slash workshops. Just scroll about midway through the page and you're going to see a for attendees section. Just fill out your name and email and again, you'll get a PDF copy of today's presentation. We do still have a handful of other free webinars or one in April next month. We have one a, a um, in-person demonstration all about creating great reels for your Instagram account. So again, that will be at the Champaign Public Library located near downtown Champaign. That schedule can also be found at the top of this website. And as Jordan mentioned, we're working on finalizing the schedule and topics from May to August. So keep an eye out for that. We'll post those. I think those should be up here before the end of this month. So certainly keep an eye out for that. As Jordan mentioned, my name is Scott Clannon. I am the owner of Clannon Marketing. We're a marketing creative agency based in downtown Champaign, and we serve clients all across the Midwest. And we do everything from brand development, website design, digital marketing, and more. We started as a social media, as a digital marketing company back in the very early days of social media when it was the Wild West and no one really knew what we were doing. On, on this newer platform for businesses, which was Facebook at that time. And over the years, we've really grown and expanded our line of services to help our clients market themselves. So I'm excited to be with you today to be sharing some tips and tricks with you on marketing on a shoestring budget. You, you may not have a ton of money to spend, but you understand the importance of marketing. And that's why you're here on today's call. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, you, you, like you, you know, we were also a small business. I still consider ourselves a smaller business. We're a smaller team that, that produces very high, high end work. But in the early stages, I didn't have a whole lot of money when, when we were marketing our business. Uh, a lot of the clients that we've worked with at the early stage of their business, they, in addition, didn't have a ton of money to, to, to start with. But that doesn't mean you can't market your business. You can't market your organization. So I'm going to be sharing with you today some tips and tricks that we utilize to really get our name out there more, to rank higher on, on the search engines, and then that our clients have also utilized as well to at least get up and rolling. Great marketing doesn't need to be expensive. You just have to think outside the box. And I'm excited to share some tips and tricks with you today. All right, so today's agenda. Now, if you've been on my past webinars, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining and, and welcome to the new newcomers. 
as you know, I, I, I love marketing and I, I wish we could spend all day, all week together um, talking ideas. And, and some of these topics that we are sharing with you today, Jordan and I have standalone webinars. So if you're interested in just branding, interested in just email marketing, there's a pretty good chance we have a webinar just about that. So certainly jot that down. Keep an eye out for our new schedule coming up soon and, and feel free to join us on one of those topics that you might need a little more training on. But for today, we're going to talk about a variety of things. It was really fun. Again, this is a brand new topic. I hope I got the timing right of it today. I've never presented this one before. Uh, but this one was interesting to put together, right? Because we could really sit down and let's just talk all different ideas. But I really wanted to structure today's conversation that kind of goes in, in two different paths. Because I know there's a variety of different companies and organizations on the call. Some of you on the call may be brand new. So you may not have a whole lot of existing customers, you're just starting out. And then some others on the call, you've been around a little bit, you already have an existing customer base, excellent. So the two paths that we're gonna be going down, of course, we're gonna talk about a high level, let's talk all different ideas of budget marketing mediums and, and different categories to have you start thinking really out of the box, right? Think beyond just something tangible like a billboard or radio ad. What are some creative ways to get our name out there for little to no cost? But the two paths that we're going down, the first one we're going to be talking about engaging your champions. This is strategies for current customer marketing and then seizing opportunity strategies for potential customer marketing. Then resources and of course ending in Q&A. As Jordan mentioned, if you have a question at any point today, feel free to use that little chat box um, in, the, in the Zoom toolbar and Jordan will read me those questions at the end. But I, I like this idea of two paths because I think for a lot of us, when we think of growing our business and advertising and marketing ourselves, a lot of us are really thinking of that potential customer, that third bullet there. What are ways to get new customers in the door? New business, people that haven't heard of us. But what's really important and something to keep in mind is what can you do to tap in to your current audience base? If you currently have one, right? And I understand some of you may be on the call that are brand new businesses, but again, eventually you're going to start growing your customer base. These strategies will be important to you, but you already have this pool of people who are who know you, they know your brand, they've purchased your product services before. How can we tap into those to then increase our word of mouth, these brand ambassadors, increase sales over time, again, re-engaging with people who've already uh, utilized your product services. So this is today's agenda. Before we dive into um, defining different budget marketing mediums, I want to go over a quick checklist of things that I certainly recommend you looking into and doing, completing, before you start diving into some marketing strategies. The first one here, and this is just one slide, we're not gonna dive into these any deep because again, we do have separate webinars on these, but you wanna understand what your overall business goals are before you start deploying some sort of strategy. Are you looking to increase sales? Are you looking to increase subscribers, increase new followers on your page? Maybe you're a new company, you need to increase brand awareness out in the community. What is your overall business goal? Of course, it's very important to identify your target audience. So who are we looking to talk to? This is gonna be really important when you do turn to different social media accounts, different mediums. Your target audience spends time somewhere online, somewhere also in the physical space. Where are they? How can we get in front of them? Great marketing is all about reaching the right person at the right time with the right message. So you really want to think about well, who am I talking to when we're thinking of all these ideas today? Developing your brand messaging and identity. Again, defining who you are. What makes you different? How are you going to stand out among competition? Why should someone spend money with you? Social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, as we've all seen, it's very busy. It's very noisy. How do we cut through the clutter to make our brand shine. You really need to make sure you, you've developed your brand messaging, you have a nice solid brand identity, your logo, color palette, fonts, et cetera. I do recommend a website. Now, again, this is all about marketing on a shoestring. I understand that everyone's gonna have all the, all the money in the world to develop a website, but there are very um, cost-effective options out there, right? Through Wix, Squarespace, GoDaddy. Uh, Google, those all offer websites that you can really get up and running if you don't have a whole lot of spend, but you're willing to put the time in 
you can kind of design these uh, yourself with some of these out of the box solutions, but it is important to at least get a website going because when someone is searching for you, when they're searching for services or products related to what you have to offer, this is how you start ranking higher on Google. So if you have a little bit of money to spend, maybe allocating that to a website, um, but again, you wanna make sure you have that. Setting up your social media profiles, making sure that your business is on platforms that make sense for the end user. For example, we're working with a glass company, um, a local glass company, and they needed an account on Nextdoor. Nextdoor is almost like Facebook, but for neighborhoods and HOAs. And so a lot of people had broken glass panels, torn screen doors. This company can go in and, and help and provide services for this. And so people were actually already talking about this company online and making recommendations. It was important for them to have then a presence on that. Uh, on that platform. So setting up your social media profiles, testing the user experience, just making sure that you're going through your website as the end user. Do the links work? Is everything rendering great on mobile? Put yourself in their shoes and test everything. And finally, research the local market and competition. You really need to understand not only who you're talking to, but the market that they're in. Um, you know, average income, certain neighborhoods in the area. What is your, who is your competition? What are they promoting right now? It's really understanding uh, who else is in the market and, and how the market is, is, is made up. So again, quick little bullet points here of things to think about before you do get started in deploying some cost-effective marketing strategies. Okay, so the first slide that we're going to go through is really a catch-all slide. Again, today's webinar is all about sparking some ideas that you can go and run with. Some of you may be um, B2C, business to consumer. Some of you may be B2B, business to business. We're a business to business, right? We offer service to other businesses. So, of course, when you're a B2C or B2B, if you're a nonprofit, if you're a for-profit, if you're a service-based, if you're a product-based business, your strategies are gonna differ. So not all of these are going to apply to everyone on the call, but I wanna at least give you a variety of different ideas. And then again, we'll take the conversation and break that down between how to market to current customers, how to market to potential customers. All right, so let's just talk ideas. So this, is, this will be fun. This is a little chart that I came up with, uh, with a variety of different categories for budget marketing. This is gonna help you think in terms of categories, okay, what else can I do for loyalty and retention? What else can I do for outreach, right? But all of these categories have a variety of different budget-friendly options that I wanna walk through you with. So the first one is digital. And I'm a huge fan of email marketing. We're not talking about sending an email through your Outlook account, sending the email through your Gmail account. We're talking actual marketing, well-designed, well-deployed emails, it's free, right? And anytime I say free today, right, there's, I don't want to pull an asterisk around everything I say. But of course, platforms, like, and I'll have a slide at the end that will show you this, but one platform I love using is MailChimp. It is free. You can host up to almost like 10,000 subscribers' emails in there. With the exception, free with the exception, of course, your time. I understand that time is money, but if you're willing to put the time in, you won't necessarily need to write a check, right? So email marketing is great. Email marketing is one that I'm going to pull out and talk a little bit more today. Of course, social media platforms, quick and easy. Making sure you have a presence on this, but, but in addition, you have a strategy on these platforms. You don't want to go silent for too long, right? You want to make sure that you're, you have some sort of strategy in place. You have some sort of marketing calendar, marketing plan that you're working off of. So you're always staying ahead. Something else too that we're seeing an uptick in is podcasting. Um, podcasts have become huge, as, especially as more and more people um, are either at home in their home office or maybe driving back to the office. They're listening to some of their favorite podcasts. Uh, Jordan and I were just talking about a podcast uh, before everyone jumped on. So podcasting is a really unique opportunity to share industry advice, share your expertise to people it does take a little bit of time to get up and rolling. Um, in terms of investment, I do know, of course, you can look to buy some podcasting equipment, but the Champaign Public Library actually just unveiled a whole new podcasting area in their basement 
um, for businesses and, and creators to test the world of podcasting. So that could be something, again, just quick and easy ideas to get the word out there. And we'll dive through some of these here in a bit. Content creation. I would be curious to see how many of you blog on your website. If you do blog, feel free to just mention that in the chat. Um, but blogging is excellent, right? Because it, it does a variety of things. It provides you the opportunity to, again, set yourself up as an industry expert in your field. It's you're providing almost free advice in, form, in a form of a blog, but it's almost an advertisement for yourself because you're showcasing, here's what I know, here are the, the, the industry that I know, this is the industry I know very well, and I'm sharing advice to my followers. And of course, if they want to learn more, maybe they can book a, book a consultation with you or utilize some of your products. So that's a pro on one side, but another pro with blogging and, and posting articles is search engine optimization. We'll talk about SEO a little more in detail here, but blogging provides an incredible amount of keywords and fresh content to your page that Google loves seeing. And so that is a one tactic of ways to rank higher and, and better on the search engine is simply blogging. Video content. We live in a world of video now. And so I mentioned earlier that we do have a, a workshop, an in-person demo workshop coming up. I certainly recommend you joining us uh, during that if you're interested in, in making reels. But when we think of social media and, and making posts, right? Of course, I know not everyone's gonna be able to run ads, right? This is how do we mark up our shoestring budget? But it doesn't cost you anything to create a short video. And I'm gonna give you some ideas of what some of those videos could be. It takes a little bit of time, but again, if you're able to put that time in and, and post a reel, you'll see sometimes you're getting more views on your video content than the number of followers on your page. That is great, especially if you have some sort of strategy and you keep up with it. You're constantly telling the story, showcasing a little behind the scenes of what's going on with your business, you start building a connection with your followers, that's excellent. And you don't need to promote it. You don't need to boost that post at all. Um, the way the social media algorithms work is that if you post a piece of content, let's say I post a, an Instagram reel, okay? I use a trending piece of audio, a trending piece of music. I clip it and edit it in a unique way. It's something fun, engaging. It's nothing too long, but I don't put any money behind it. If it's a really engaging video, meaning that in a short period of time, a lot of people are viewing it, they're liking it and commenting it, the algorithms on Instagram and on Facebook are going to be like, hey, something is really popular with this video. We're going to show it to more people. And you didn't have to spend any money. They'll just do that for you. But it's all about making sure you understand what your audience is responding to online. This is where that time comes into play. And then how do, how do I craft content around that? One quick example I have is I have a friend that runs a, um, uh, a whiskey channel. And he has this great little whiskey collection. He, he, he rates and, and reviews different whiskeys, right? And he posted this video. And it was just a little panning video of the whiskey room. And it showed all the different bottles and everything. And a really cool little setup. But it wasn't anything crazy. It was no trending audio. There was no editing and everything. Over 1 million views on that video. And in, in overnight, he gained maybe, I think, 1,000 new followers. That could happen. And he didn't, he didn't put, he basically didn't follow any best practice with that video. It was really good content that just happened to stand out line. And that went viral a little bit, right? Um, it doesn't mean now every post after that is going to be a massive hit, but it it, it doesn't take a whole lot anymore to really push um, and, and, and grow your, your following and grow your, your viewership online. Live streaming, again, there's no cost to go live on Facebook. I know many of you are probably a little nervous going live. I am as well. Um, but again, any more in the world of social, it, it, it's not as buttoned up or polished as maybe it once was, except of course, if you're a financial institution, wealth management advisor, you're an industry where you probably need to be a little more buttoned up. But live streaming, again, helps humanize your brand. We'll talk about that in a bit. And um, it kind of, again, sets yourself up as a, it sets yourself up as an industry expert. 
Word of mouth marketing, how do we get other people talking about your business? We'll talk about that. Referral programs, that's a great way to get people coming back in. As long as you're open to giving some sort of freebie, a discount, um, some sort of incentive. And if you're open to that, you can fold that in to referral programs, contests, loyalty programs. There's so much that you can do if you're open to being a little flexible with certain fun discounts, buy one, get one, limited time offers. That could be a great way to build some sort of awareness campaign, marketing campaign around that without spending a whole lot of money. Exclusive customer events. Again, having them feel like they're part of something, like they're connected to your brand. If you have some existing customers that you know are great, run some sort of sip and shop or some sort of private event evening just for some of your current customers. Of course, outreach, webinars, virtual events, um, in-kind sponsorships. So for example, if you're um, maybe a photographer and you are looking to maybe grow your portfolio a bit, but you don't have a whole lot of money to you know, spend in sponsorship, maybe there's a local event happening in your downtown you can sponsor, maybe offer an in-kind opportunity where it's like, hey, I could be the event photographer for your event and I will offer X amount of photos that's typically worth this package. In trade, um, would you be able to list me as a sponsor? And I'll give you these photos at no cost. So it's a little bit of a trade. That's how a lot of new businesses kind of get the word out there. If they offer some sort of in-kind sponsorship or donating items to some sort of raffle or whatever it may be, there's a variety of different fun opportunities there. A guerrilla tactics, pop-up shops, street teams. Again, this is really contingent on like the market that you're in. Um, I certainly recommend Googling like guerrilla marketing tactic examples and seeing there's some incredible, really creative ones out there. Um, they're, they're a little unconventional, but it still gets the word out more. Um, like chalking a sidewalk or hiring a professional chalk art artist to, to do something cool. Again, something that's a lower cost, but makes a really, really big impact. Feedback and improvement. So surveys, feedback, user-generated content, you may be thinking, how is that a marketing medium? But really what this is, it helps you make informed decisions, right? So you want to make sure that every experience that you're offering to your customer is an excellent one. And so you want to understand how your process is going along. You want to understand what are ways that maybe I can improve the certain customer touch points along the way. And if I improve that, the customers are going to have a great experience with me every time. Or you may be thinking, hey, we offer this, this great experience when customers come into our coffee shop. But then we find out actually there's this one staff member that every time they're on shift, there's some not great feedback. And so maybe we need to do some retraining to get them on board with our brand and our expectations, right? It just creates this nice consistent experience. When people have consistent experiences, they turn into brand advocates. Brand advocates then turn into word of mouth marketers. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. User generated content, I love this. So if someone is sharing a review on Google, if someone wrote some kind words about you or sent a thank you card in the mail or something, that's all content that that you could share um, on your social media channels. We call that social proof. If someone else is using your service or product and they like it and they said great things, I probably will trust them too. We can talk all day about how our business and organization is great. Um, but when we have a customer do it for us, it adds just a whole nother level of trust. Interactive content. So, if you haven't played around with some really cool interactive tools within Instagram, like if you're posting something to your story, look for that little sticker icon at the top that looks like it's kind of peeling off. It's like a little smiley face sticker. Inside of that tool, when you do post a story, you can run quizzes, polls. We do this a few times a year and it's a fun way to interact with our followers without us saying we offer marketing services. So we'll do fun, um, you know, what's the, what's the best Thanksgiving side dish? Or can you guess these Halloween movies by just us using emojis? And then people will respond and interact and we almost gamify the experience a bit within our story. What's great too is that Instagram is watching this and it's seeing, hey, this account 
gets a lot of interaction when they do post stories and, uh, and polls and things. So next time they post more content, maybe we'll show this a little more to our followers because it's seeing that your account typically generates a lot of activity. So quizzing people, this could be great for feedback as well. So if you're unsure, uh, I see a lot of boutiques that do this where they'll go to Chicago or they'll go down to Texas to do a big shopping event to get a new lineup for the summer, for the fall. While they're there, maybe they hold up two different tops, two different pairs of shoes, and they'll have their followers rank which ones they really like. So it's a fun way to interact with your followers, gather feedback, at zero cost, so that's a that's a great um, great idea. Okay, let's segue over to strategies for current customer marketing. So we already went through just kind of a grab bag of different low cost options in these different categories, but now let's start thinking of okay, I have a business, we have some current customers, I really haven't thought of what are ways that I can continue marketing to them. What should I be thinking about? And so let's really think, talk about real quick, the power of your current customers. They're the backbone of your growth, right? They've already, like I mentioned earlier, they've already selected you. They've experienced your service, your products, and they trust you already. That alone takes marketing dollars, just getting them there. So you're already saving money by, by retargeting your current customers. Again, they not only contribute to immediate revenue, but they all have the potential to become vocal advocates if they, if they really appreciate the service and they, they love everything that you do. And you want to think of them as brand ambassadors. These can help, these individuals can help spread the word through their friends, through their connections, through their own social media pages. So again, they are almost like this unpaid uh, street team, the sales team, as long as you keep them happy. Okay, so current customer marketing. Now, of course, all the strategies that we just covered, there are ways that you pick and pull those and use those for customer uh, current customers. Uh, but I, just for sake of time today, I wanted to pull out three that I thought would be good to really hone in on. And the first one is word of mouth marketing. We're gonna talk real quick about referral programs, um, encouraging customer advocacy, email marketing, we'll talk the importance of that, and then social media engagement. Not necessarily, okay, let's grow your likes and let's grow your shares, but how do we humanize our account so then we start building this connection with our followers that then make them turn back into word of mouth marketing, okay? So let's talk about word of mouth marketing. This is, if you can still see me on the screen, um, I have a book that I love. This was a book that I purchased when I was just starting out. It is a little bit older now. I think it came out in 2012 or 2013. It's called Word of Mouth Marketing. And at the bottom of the screen here, I included a little source. And this chart is actually from this book. And online, this book has a whole website. Um, online, there's some great little resources that you can download too. And all these, these great ideas of how to get people talking about your brand. And, and these are things that we implemented in our business as well. But in this um, printout, I love this, um, they called it the five T's uh, resource guide. And it's a fun little, little chart here where it's step one, talkers. What to do, find people who will talk about you. Examples, fans, volunteers, customers, bloggers. Two, topics. Give them, give people a reason to talk. Special offer, cool service, uh, silliness, new feature, right? And then you can see the rest, tools, taking part in tracking. The example I, I, I personally love is, is a larger example, larger company, but just because they're large doesn't mean a smaller business can, can, couldn't do it. Chewy, right? I have a cat at home. Chewy is just a very friendly company, but how do we know that? And it's because they do little, these little touch points. They take an extra five minutes from a representative's day and they do little things. They send handwritten thank you cards. You know, if, if a loved one's pet passed away and they say cancel the subscription, sometimes they'll do something special for you. But they've built this brand of friendliness and of this kindness, right? that people will start sharing the little handwritten note that they get in the shipment. Their talkers are definitely pet owners, current customers, and topics give people reason to talk, 
Sometimes we do handwritten thank you cards, birthday cards for our pets um, within, within their shipments. There are so many other examples, but I wanted to really talk about who are the talkers. And then for, for most of us, it's your current customers. But there's a variety of other talkers I want you to keep in mind as you are thinking of your, your, your strategies and what are ways to get these other people talking. So types of talkers, of course, the first one, happy customers. These are people that you already have. They're loyal to you. They purchased from you before. But what are some other ones? Another one could be online talkers. These are people who um, post a comment about you online. And just be sure when you do see that, you're responding. I'll give you some ideas of how to capitalize on some of these talkers here in a bit. Logo lovers, if you have a really cool design, um, a really cool element, a visual element to your brand, you put it on a tote bag. How awesome is that? With them just using the tote bag at a farmer's market, that is word of mouth marketing. They are considered a logo lover in the types of talkers. Again, according to this, this great book here. Eager employees, you're going to see there are some team members on your team that love everything that you do, that are very proud of what, what you do. Um, how do we tap into our current employees? Listeners, you may have people that are already subscribed to a newsletter, who are already subscribed to a blog. Let's lean into those individuals and professionals, reporters, journalists, critics, bloggers, etc. So what are some strategies here? So for happy customers, if they're happy and you know they're happy, right? They, they continue to come back and purchase from you. What can you do? Certainly encourage online reviews, get them talking, right? Have a little QR code in some sort of, um, maybe a thank you card. Maybe you're shipping something to someone. You know, what we do after we're done, I'm just trying to see if I have one on my desk, but we send a little thank you card in the mail, handwritten note, but there's a postcard uh, I'm sorry, a business card size card in there with a QR code. That QR code takes the user over directly to our Google reviews. And we say something like, hey, love working with us? Share your experience online. Or we'd appreciate if you could share your experience online. That's a way to get happy customers talking, encouraging reviews, implementing some sort of referral program, hosting customer events, et cetera. Online talkers, just make sure that you are responding to the reviews so they feel heard. They just took the time to leave you a great review online. Hey, thank you so much, Susan, for, for taking the time to leave a review. We really appreciate you having as a customer. We can't wait to see you again. That little sense of being heard, they're going to remember that. and They're going to feel happy that they, um, that they are seen online and that they're part of, they're part of your brand. Logo lovers. So if you maybe have some little swag. Swag doesn't need to be very expensive either, but maybe you've partnered with um, like an up and coming artist or something that's looking for some sort of medium to apply their art on. That could be a unique way to maybe the both of you can go in and, and go in on some sort of cool tote bag and have some sort of design that's, that's relevant to your brand or some sort of saying, not just your logo, um, but this is a great way to maybe get your word out in some physical materials. Eager employees, facilitating internal communication, making sure that they feel part of the team. They know what's going on at your business. A lot of times they're your front line. And so you want to make sure the experience that you would offer to your customers is that same experience they are expected to deliver to your customers. So make sure that they're in the loop. You're creating shareable content. LinkedIn, for example, and, and that's actually a topic Jordan and I will be releasing here coming up. This next quarter is LinkedIn for businesses, but LinkedIn has a really cool tool where if you post something to your company page, you can then push it out and notify your employees and your employees could share on their pages. Again, the ones that are very happy working there and they don't mind, of course, sharing stuff to their personal page if it's coming from the business, but that's a great way if you're, maybe you, there's a big milestone or you won this big community award you won this parade or, or something that your business was in, creating that content that could be shared by employees online is another great way to just get people talking. Listeners, these are people who are, again, subscribed to your newsletters, your blogs, sharing exclusive content, insider updates, you're asking for feedback, you're rewarding engagement, you're facilitating this community building. Maybe these are people that would be a good look pilot group to start a private Facebook page if that makes sense for your business. And we'll talk about that here in a bit.
And then professionals, again, reporters, journalists, bloggers, you want to make sure for those, you want to build a personal relationship with them. You want to understand their writing style, what they're interested in reporting on, or if they specialize in something. Um, maybe you offer them exclusive access. So if maybe you're a new restaurant that's opening and you want to get the word out there, finding someone in the community that maybe writes about local food and dining establishments, inviting them to come in for some sort of pre-grand opening night, um, building some sort of relationship with that individual. That's a great way for them from day one to understand your brand and, and get to know you as, as a human behind this company. Um, and then there's a good chance that they'll provide you with some honest feedback and they, they feel connected with you and, and part of your brand by just building that personal relationship with them. Okay, we're going to go through just some other quick word of mouth um, strategies and segue over to the next section here. Of course, you want to make sure you're engaging on social media, you're responding to comments, you're sharing user generated content. Um, maybe developing that referral program that rewards customers for bringing in new business, offering discounts, exclusive access, showcasing customer testimonials. We see this a lot too when people are sharing something on Google or they're sharing a review on Google, turning that into a really cool graphic on Canva. We'll talk about Canva. Depending on your business, maybe you're emailing people all the time. Having a little hyperlink at the bottom of your email, it's like, hey, check out our new summer programming schedule and then hyperlinking that to your website. Easy way to promote something um, on your website for people that you're already communicating with. And DIY public relation campaigns. So I know a lot of the local news has like a morning segment, afternoon segment. Really think about what could I do? Does my business, would it make sense to be on one of those segments? And if so, why does it make sense? Well, let's say if I wanted to go on the afternoon segment of WCIA, a local news station here in Champaign, you know, I could say, well, I know their, their viewership or people between these ages, these genders, and it is National Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm a local counseling center. And I would love to see if maybe I could come on and do some sort of, um, you know, five or 10 tips for mental health to keep in mind to, for mental health awareness. But something little like that, where you're not necessarily selling yourself, but you're providing free advice and guidance for something that is a little newsworthy, right? It's timely. That's something that, that, you, could certainly, that you could certainly do. We did the same thing for a client, Indy. They had a new summer bar menu, all these really fun summer drinks. And we were able to pitch that to the afternoon segment. They were actually already looking for programming. It lined up great. And they were able to get on the new segment in return, a lot of times you get the recording of that segment that you can share on social media, zero dollars. That didn't cost them anything they'd be on that segment. Outside of time, of course, but DIY PR campaigns. All right, with email marketing, a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. It's affordable. Um, it's, it typically offers high um, uh, return on investment. It's automated. You can segment this out for your audience in different lists. So you can, again, hit the right people with the right message. But I love email marketing because unlike a billboard or TV ad, there's no cost to send an email. So one of the things that I really want to make sure you, I recommend is segmenting your customer base, meaning think about your audience on your list. Are there ways to divide them into different buckets? For example, we have one that's just clients and we have one that's called subscribers, people that we haven't had the opportunity to work with, but they still follow along. They still learn, want to learn a little more what's going on in the marketing industry. What are your customer bases? Could they be very loyal customers? Could you put all your customers who have May birthdays, all of your May birthday people in one list so you can email them some birthday messages? But you want to make sure within email marketing, you try to personalize the email campaign. So some of you may be e-commerce stores, you sell a product. Have you considered or looked into some of the behavioral triggers, the automated email? So if someone puts something in their cart and they abandon their cart, do you have a touch point with that person to follow up with them? Again, there's no cost to send that email. You do have to make sure that the back end of your e-commerce store can do that if you do have that set up. Exclusive offers rewarding customer loyalty by sending exclusive offers or discount. Again, this could be a great way to, for people to sign up for your email list. Hey, every so often 
we offer a coupon code in our email. Be sure to sign up. Personalized subject lines. If you do have it formatted correctly, where you have the first name, last name, and email address on the back end of a program called MailChimp, you could say, hi, Scott, you know, we'd love to see you again, or it's been a while since we've seen you, or enjoy 20% off your next order. Putting the name in the subject line really does help on overall email open rates and engagement rates. There's a variety of different types of emails that you could send. I think a lot of times we just think of general newsletters, but what about a welcome email? Hey, this could be an automated, if someone joins your list for the first time, welcoming them to the brand. That's a great way for you to share the story of your business. So from day one, this new customer who just maybe signed up for your email understands why you're in business, how you started your business, what your mission is, et cetera. Of course, newsletter, promotional emails are pretty straightforward, educational content, tutorials, how to get started in blank. Um, here are the latest tips of, or the trends that we're seeing in the marketing industry. What are some cool maybe educational content that you want to share? Of course, birthday emails are really popular. If you happen to collect birthdays from your customers, this is a great touch point, um, again, no cost, to, to get your name out there um, in front of those individuals. Something to note too, if you do have a brick and mortar store and you offer free Wi-Fi, Talk to your internet provider to see what are ways that you can maybe capture your user's data. If you're providing Wi-Fi at no cost, you should get something for it, right? What better uh, data than customer data? So a lot of times you can get their name, you can get their email if you want to ask for that, or their birthday. And then what's really cool is that you can run reports on the back end and see, okay, run a report of people who've been in the store for the past 30 days or haven't been in over the past 90 People have birthdays coming up over the next month, and all those are touch points to get in front of those individuals. Again, it takes a little time, but it can be a very effective um, way of, of reaching individuals. And next for current customer marketing, we want to talk about social media engagement. So what are ways to humanize your brand? It's not just about likes and shares, but what are ways to get people connected? So this could be behind the scenes content. What's, what's it like working there? Uh, user-generated content. We talked about that earlier. Employee spotlights. This is a big one. If you do have a team and you have some people that have been with you for some time, sh showcase them online. Uh, they're part of your brand. They're part of your story. And it, it adds a personal touch. It creates familiarity and trust with people following you online. And of course, engaging in conversations, respond to comments, ask questions, participate in maybe some discussions that may be happening in the comment section. You want to be, you want to feel a part of your customers online and engaging those conversations a quick and easy, low cost way to humanize your brand a bit more. And then of course, we talked about fostering a sense of community. So you want to make sure that you do have that consistent brand voice across all of your materials, whether that be a printed flyer, a website, a social media channel, it could be humor, it could be expertise, but you want to make sure your consistent tone is there because this helps build a sense of overall community. Interactive content we talked about, polls, surveys, if applicable, private groups. So for example, let's say if I'm a uh, a pottery uh, a business, a pottery studio, and I offer pottery classes, I could then maybe, I could probably, of course have my Facebook page, but maybe I can create a private group just for the people who are in my classes. This is a great way for people to um, make friends, to share ideas, to just have some discussion maybe between classes, promote upcoming classes for people who've already taken a class of ours, that could be a great idea to start a private group, start those conversations online. <clears throat> Exclusive offers and uh, sneak peeks is another great way to um, share some little uh, behind the scenes tips, some little uh, maybe exclusive special offers just for people who subscribe to your newsletter, who just follow you online that other people on other platforms may not get. So maybe it's just our Instagram follower um, uh, special. Okay, so those are some just general ideas for current customer marketing. And now I wanna walk through some ideas for potential customer marketing. And these, these are some strategies, of course, not an end-all strategy. I do wanna just start with uh, just a few here on ways to attract and grow new customers coming in. And of course, there are some benefits of unlocking potential uh, customers. Of course, expands your reach, 
helps you grow and it, it builds um, kind of that word of mouth experience you know, down there when we, when we talk about the, the ripple effect. It's not about just creating a ripple effect. Each conversation has potential to amplify your brand through positive experiences, word of mouth, and social media mentions. So the three that we want to cover quickly here is search engine optimization, partnerships and collaboration, and then community engagement events. So the first one we've probably all heard of, and this is the question I get asked a lot, is how do I rank higher on Google? I get calls all the time from Google saying I need to pay them X, Y, Z. Just hang up if you get those calls. Google will never call you, right? Those are just other marketing companies that say they're with Google and they can help you rank higher on Google. Outside of ads that show up at the very top, Right? Those are Google search ads, those you do have to pay for, but everything below that is what's called your organic non-paid ranking. This is all related to how your website is designed. So I wanna share some tips with you because if you can achieve high ranking on Google, incredible. That is gold in the marketing world. We've actually, that's how we grew our business by really focusing on SEO because we didn't have a whole lot of money to spend at that time. And all of a sudden we started seeing an uptick in phone calls and inquiries because we ranked pretty high in Google and they went to the first few spots. So it's all about how, again, your website's designed. You want to make sure that you're incorporating good keywords on your website. Use tools like the Google Keyword Planner if you're taking notes, that's one. The SEM Rush is another good uh, tool too that provides insights and data into some good keywords that you can use on your website. You have um, different like on-page um, optimization, ensure your website content, meta tags and headers are optimized. And you may be thinking, Scott, what is a meta title? What is a meta description? Basically, when you go to Google and you see the list of all your options, you see a header and description. That header is your meta title. That little line there is called your meta description you have the ability to set that on the back end of your website. If you're using something simple like Wix or Squarespace or GoDaddy, a lot of times they have a whole SEO section. Just make sure that you take the time to understand what are all the fields that I need to fill out for my website to be successful. It's not just about, oh, I think this website looks great. Take the time to really dive through the back end settings to make sure everything is set up appropriately for those search engines. We talked about the ability to blog. This is a great way for you to market your business for a low cost online, but it does help with SEO down the road. Um, and then user experience. You want to make sure it's loading fast. You don't want very large images or large videos on your site that could slow things down. Uh, just ensure that people can find what they're looking for very, very quickly and that it's very easy to navigate. These are some free resources I want to give you. The Google Search Central. These are some tips and tricks to um, uh, really get your business optimized for the search engines. And one of the first things that they ask you is, are you a web developer? Great, we're gonna talk all the nitty gritty and, and the very complex things of, of Google search, or are you a business owner and do you manage a website? Yes, great, we're gonna give you more of a high level explanation of how things work. Again, that is through the Google Search Central. The Google Search Council is a free tool that you can install on your website. There's no subscription cost. This is going to show you how you rank on Google over time and what keywords help generate your website. And then Google Analytics. Knowledge is, is power, right? And so Google Analytics, free program, you install that on your website and then you're going to get access to all these really cool reports of where people came from, what they did on your website and more. <clears throat> okay, we have about just a couple more slides here, and then we'll go over some questions. But next, I want to talk about partnerships and collaborations. And this is really key for any new business, or excuse me, any new business starting out that is looking to grow, especially wanting to grow new customers. You want to try to find complementary partners if possible. So seek partnerships whose product or services complement yours without direct competition. It's really all about if I can partner with you on this, I can kind of reach into your audience and, and get my brand, my name in front of, front of your followers and vice versa. The people that I partner with, they can get their name and brand in front of my followers. It's a win-win if done well. 
<clears throat> so for example, we worked with a, uh, a client that didn't have a ton of money to spend. It was a physical therapy clinic and they partnered with a local shoe store in town for a variety of different fun little giveaways and contests and promos. They were tagging each other in social media all the time. And so there was certainly a, a great chance that again, followers of both page, hey, I never heard about this shoe company or hey, I've actually struggled with pain in my neck or back before. I should check out this, this physical therapy company of my shoe store that I go to, recommended them. I should probably trust them as well. Again, that sense of social proof. Maybe there's some events that you can help co-host, workshops that you can go in on together. Again, like I mentioned, at the end of the day, you want to really leverage each other's networks and tap into your, your bases. And then community engagement events. There's a variety of different ideas when it comes to engaging with the community. Try to seek speaking opportunities. Try to go to different workshops and seminars. You know, it's, it's easy when you have a lot of money to spend in marketing, right? Because I can run a billboard, I can run a bus ad, and immediately my business name gets out there. But when you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, it is hard getting out there, right? And, and creating this sense of, of trust and, and social proof within your local market. And so what better way than, than you or maybe another person on your team um, to just get out there and talk about your business? What are ways that maybe you can partner with certain libraries or um, uh Maybe there's a young professionals networking group that you can offer to pay for uh, a couple little appetizers and then maybe speak uh, for their event, right? Low cost ways to get you as the owner of your business out there uh, is an excellent low cost way to, uh, to increase brand awareness in the community. So you can organize workshops or seminars, position yourself as an industry expert, really look at uh, local events in your marketplace. That's why it's important early on to to research the market. Maybe there's events, festivals, gatherings that would make sense for you to be there. For example, we had a client that, <clears throat> excuse me, is a, a beard care company. And there is a event here in town called like the Flannel Fest um, in the fall. And there's a lot of really cool like outdoor type of activities during this fest, but that's a great way for them to show up in a community event. Of course, there may be some cost to set up a little booth, um, but maybe there's some in-kind opportunities or maybe that is a cost that you can swing. But again, you're in front of people who have the potential to buy your product because it's very much in line with your target audience. So really think about and pick and choose what events or festivals or local gatherings you, may, you might want to explore or show up at um, that would make sense to just overall increase your brand awareness online. So again, a variety of different ideas for, um, for budget-friendly marketing strategies, everything from email marketing, referral programs, user-generated content, those polls and quizzes. You really don't need to, to break the bank when it comes to, to marketing, but you do need to spend a little more time thinking outside the box and thinking creatively because it's not as black and white as I want to run a Facebook campaign. I want to run a TV commercial. I want to run a billboard. This is more, well, what can we do? Maybe if we partner with our neighboring business on this event, or if we offer this referral program, we could do a 15% discount. Low cost strategies are there, but it might take a little more time to think about what works best for your business. I do want to leave you with a variety of different um, uh, resources that I love using. We talked about the Search Central, Google Search Council, Analytics, and of course, Google My Business. But here's some other ones I certainly recommend exploring uh, that little to no cost, Canva. This is an excellent program. Um, it really has shaken up the graphic design world. I'm sure some designers are against Canva, but it's not going anywhere. So we really tell our clients to, to embrace it, look into it, especially if you're looking to create some graphics in-house, so you maybe not have the funds to, to hire a graphic designer, you can, if they have a free version, they do have a premium version, but there's a lot of pre-built, really nice templates and designs in there for Facebook graphics, so um, Instagram stories, a lot of cool stuff. SurveyMonkey is a great platform or Google Forms is a great platform to uh, collect data and feedback from your customers to make informed decisions in the future. 
MailChimp we talked about, incredible email marketing platform that is free to use. It takes a little bit of time to get up and running. You can, of course, upload all of your email contacts in there. And then HubSpot CRM, this is a customer database platform <clears throat> where you can keep track of all your customers, add notes, add their contact information. CRM platforms, if you're unfamiliar, are really cool, robust systems. HubSpot actually offers one that's free to get up and running. And this is gonna essentially help keep you organized when it comes to your, your master list of all of your contacts here. So, all right, so that is just our crash course of a variety of different budget-friendly marketing options to market towards, again, different groups, current customers, potential customers. There's not a set list of what you can do. Of course, as you've seen, there's a variety of different options, and some of these on here are going to be more relevant to you than maybe others on the call. Uh, but certainly explore and try. And, and, it, and again, great marketing does not need to be expensive. Anyone can do it, um, but it's going to, think, it's going to take a little bit of time, again, thinking outside the box, thinking creatively and testing. See what works well. Understand what's happening when you send an email understand what some of your benchmarks are. If I send an email, what should my open rate be? What should my click rate be? And if I'm not achieving those, continue to refine and make adjustments and you'll see that the pieces of the puzzle will really start falling into place. So at this time, I'm gonna hand it over to Jordan. We have about, uh, about four minutes here-ish to see if we have any questions and we'll go from there. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, we did have a couple of questions come in. The first one says, how have the new newsletter regulations changed how your clients distribute their newsletters if they do do one? Um, I, I'm unfamiliar with if the specifics of the newsletter letter regulations or which ones maybe they're referring to. Um, I haven't heard of our clients making any immediate changes with the way that they're um, distributing their newsletter, so I'm unsure. I do know that we spoke, I think, a couple of sessions ago about the the reply to email a little bit that and how that right. had changed. Um, right. But I know you had said there was like a workaround for that in some cases and always evolving, essentially. Yeah, it's always evolving. Yeah. And a lot of times if you are using those platforms like MailChimp or Constant Contact, they're going to provide you with hopefully the information or uh, latest updates, rules and regulations regarding utilizing their platform. So. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the next one says, as an LLC that only employs myself, how much time per week would you say someone should be dedicating to things like social media content, blogging, blogging, et cetera? That's an excellent question. Um, I don't have a set like time, like how much time you should be spending, because it really depends if it is. Yeah, if it is only you, obviously you need to be working on other things. I would look at, you know, maybe writing down every, and this is what I did. I wrote down everything I was trying to do in a week and really found out what, what I have to be doing. And then what are things that maybe someone, someone, if possible, someone could maybe help me with. There are people out there, especially for like young designers or young marketing individuals that are looking to grow their portfolio that are, that are wanting to do that, but maybe they're offering uh, their services free of charge. You know, they're they're a little new, they're a little fresh, but again, they, they're knowledgeable. Maybe they're a current student or something. So that could be that could be something to look into. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to manage it, you manage your time to where you are keeping up with things, right? You don't want to start blogging and you might have a blog once a week or every other week, and then it becomes too much to where it falls off and it's once every three months. So as long as you're managing to where it's like, okay. During this town time, I can create my social media content and I could have 80% scheduled for the next two weeks. You don't want to schedule 100% of everything, but you could go ahead and schedule things on maybe a slower period of time in one hour, get a couple weeks of content scheduled out. So again, sorry, I can't answer how much time to spend, but you do want to make sure it's all balanced to where your time's not taken away from, from other things too much. All right. And the next one says, how do you approach this approach establishing a partnership? In the past, I tried, but they wanted my client list, which is private, and I could not share. So they weren't interested. Yeah, if 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 they just wanted your client list and they weren't interested, I think it was great that you did walk away or didn't pursue that. Really, it's all about um, coming to the table with knowledge about who you're wanting to partner with. And so when people have approached me, 
I can, I can clock if it's a quick copy and paste email and they just switched my name out. But if, if they've taken the time to research my company or, or say, on the flip side, if you took the time to research someone that you're interested in partnering with of like, hi, we're so-and-so, this is our brand. This is our core audience. I love your brand and I know that that you speak to these people and this is what you stand for. And I feel like there's some great synergy between these brands. Is there a way that we can maybe uh, market um, and come up with some sort of uh, mutually beneficial event or program that would that would be a win-win to both of us? You know, just approaching it like that, coming in with knowledge about the other brand. Um, that would certainly stand out because I think everyone's been approached with sponsorship or partnership opportunities. We can tell they, they don't even really know anything about my business at all. So uh, that would be a good first, uh, you know, your foot in the door there. All right. And our last one that we have submitted right now um, says, are there websites, are there websites that provide certain backgrounds for use on Canva, like video B-roll, book images, et cetera? Video video backgrounds. I mean, there are some on there like Shutterstock that that provides, or like there's like stock libraries for videos. If you use like Wix or Square, I think Wix. I know they do have some built-in video B rolls that you can put into your website. In terms of 3D book images, if you're looking for some sort of 3D book that you could put your own design on, look at Creative. Market. It's a really cool marketplace that offers cool mockups and things that you can use for your website. Of course, there's some costs associated with it, but it may be um, cheaper than having a designer design it from scratch. I mean, I've seen some mockups on there goes as little as five dollars to twenty dollars or something, and then you can reuse that three D book image that mockup over and over again. And I'll add to as uh, someone who uses Canva very often. If you have the free version, they have some images. If you have the pro version, they have tons of things that you could be looking for. So Excellent. once again, there's a cost with that, but um, they have a, a huge library too. Yep. Excellent point. Um, okay. It does look like we're all caught up on questions. So I want to thank everyone for joining us. Just a quick reminder in case you jumped on a little later, you will get a recording of today's session. I'll also include that link that Scott shared at the beginning of the website where you can download a PDF version of the presentation. So thank you again for joining us and thank you so much, Scott, for presenting. Yep. Thank you all so much for joining again, our new webinar, new webinar topic today. I hope to see you at one of our next webinars and have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody.